Welcome to Encounter Wargaming, I'm Jay, and last week we built a gallows. Today I'm going to show you how I paint it. Alright, so last week we built a sweet little gallows, and today I'm going to show you how I painted it up to look awesome, just like this right here. Uh, basically, the techniques I'm going to be going over today is really the quickest, and the quickest way, and the best looking way to do it very quickly and make it match all the other Malifaux pieces that we've done. My camera actually messed up a little bit on me when I was doing the base coat on this, so I'm just gonna tell you guys now, the very first step, we're gonna paint the entire terrain piece with this Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch Satin Espresso Brown, um, and basically that will seal in all the sand, it will soak nice into the wood, and create a nice brown base coat that we can, that we can put all our other colors on top of. So. Let's check it out once we got the brown on there. Sweet, so we've got them painted all brown. Now, I actually started by doing the wood parts because A, it's gonna so I know it's gonna soak in a lot. So I don't know if you can really see it from there, uh, from the angle I've got the camera right now, but especially on the tops here and especially on the dowels as well, you can really see the wood grain coming through the dark brown. But that's okay, because this was really just a base coat to get the paint to soak in. I want it to do that, but on the, on the sand, I made sure to put it on real thick, so that way, because it, also it's gonna soak in like a sponge, but I actually want the espresso brown as the base color for the dirt. I don't want it as the base color for the wood. However, the next color I'm gonna put on here, this way it won't soak in as much. This one has already done that. So, I did the wood first because yes, it's gonna soak in, but also, that way it'd be pretty much dry by the time I was done putting the brown on the base, which is what we've done. So now, because it's a little bit dry, I want to be able to lean it on its back without messing it up and paint the bottom of the piece with our same espresso brown just to make sure, and I'm going to put it on real thick, just to make sure that when it dries, both the bottom and the top dry together. So hopefully this will counter a little bit of our warping. If not, at the very least, it'll prevent it from warping further. And I'm just putting it on real thick. It doesn't matter what color you use. I'm just using the same one just because I have the can open and I have an abundance of this stuff. Um, but you can use anything. You can use another color paint if you don't like this. You can use white glue. Uh, in fact, the way I could have countered that before I hit this stage was when I put the sand on, I could have put white glue on the bottom as well as the top. So when I put my sand on and the top shrinks, as the glue dries, it shrinks, um, it wouldn't have done that. Both sides would have dried at the same rate, if that makes sense. So that's all I'm doing. And then uh, I'm just gonna leave them like that to dry. Sweet, so now that our brown is pretty much most of the way dry, it's not 100% dry, it's a little bit sticky still on the sand, but the wood parts are at least dry, and that's good because now I'm going to add another layer, um, another coat of paint, I should say, on the wood parts, and it is going to take a while to dry as well, so might as well kill two birds with one stone while I'm waiting for this to dry, that can continue to dry. Since I'm going to try and get as little as possible, on the actual base of the terrain and try and paint just the wood parts. So, as our base color, I've decided to use cinnamon brown. This is generally what I use for wood type things. You guys have seen it in the past as, you know, I've used it on trees and things like that. And uh, today, we're gonna be painting all of this base coat, a nice base coat of the cinnamon brown. So, let's do it. Believe in fate, all soulmates. Cause I give thanks to the taxi that brought you here. No, I wouldn't trade laughter for gold. No. Priceless, everything works out. Isn't it 
perfect, everything works out. And I'm jumping the gun. All right, so there we go. So now we're going to let that color dry, and then we're going to come back and hit it with a wash. Sweet. So now that our cinnamon is dry, we're, we're uh, going to apply a black wash. Basically, uh, right now we've kind of got a uniform brown color, which doesn't really fit with the uh, dark, sort of drabby dirtiness of our existing Malifaux terrain. So if I wanted it to be a uniform cinnamon color, I would paint definitely a second coat because you can see some of the dark brown splotchiness coming through on these boards, uh, especially on the flat areas like the uh, sides of the dowels as well as the top of the popsicle sticks. But I, of course, want to actually create a lot of depth in this piece using the most simplest, simplest methods possible. So the next step, we're going to apply a black wash. And I'm not going to use my null oil because that stuff is way too expensive for something of this size. But uh, I've just mixed here in a little uh, container I got at the dollar store. I got I don't know, half a dozen of these for a buck. And uh, I'm just mixing some black Crafters acrylic. Nothing crazy, you know, probably a dollar a bottle too. With a uh, little bit of water, so about a third paint and two thirds water. Or even a 50-50 mix if you want it a little bit thicker. And just make sure to shake it up really well. It being a water-based paint, it's very easy to thin with water. Um, I don't need a medium, so especially in this case, I'm going to be dry brushing layers on top of it. So I'm just going to hit it with a straight black watered down paint and uh, hopefully it'll do the trick. It has on all the other terrain pieces you guys have been seeing on the channel. This is generally the way I do things. Of course, I did this on the jungle trees if you guys saw those videos. And if you haven't, go back and watch them because you're missing out. So now that I've got it all nice and mixed, it's just as simple has taken it straight out of this and dropping it all over this. Now, right now you're seeing it very thick, but because it's mostly water, or at least half water, it'll run off the terrain piece. So don't worry if you put it on really thick, guys, because it will bleed as it dries. So, let's just do this. I'm just covering the entire thing. And uh, I guess you guys don't need to watch it in slow. Let's check it out in fast motion. covered in the black wash. Uh, basically this has now just brought out all the wood grains again. So all our dowels, our popsicle sticks, all that stuff. Uh, now you can actually see the wood grains. Once we put the cinnamon brown on you couldn't really see it. Uh, right now I'm just going around and finding any areas where it's pooled, where it's run off too much or I didn't really get much. And just making sure it's all kosher. Cool. Uh, so now we've created a nice shading and we can see all of the wood grain hopefully now when we dry brush the cinnamon brown back on for the next layer uh, We're gonna see all the details just come to life So just doing the final steps making sure it's everywhere and fixing any areas where it might be pooling where I don't want it to be pooling and For the most part, I'm just making sure it's evenly spread Sure there's no one up to cinnamon brown. Also, uh, if in the chance that there is still some of the popsicle sticks and the dowels and stuff, the original color of them showing through, which is unlikely now that we did two coats of brown, two different browns and a coat of wash, but uh, if there was any, then the coat of wash 
will go into all the little corners and crevices where your brush may not have actually gotten and there won't be any of that showing through anymore. So there it is. We'll let that dry for a few hours and then go on to the next stage. Alright, so our wash is fully dry and now we get to do some fun with dry brushing. So now that I've got the black wash all over this, it just created a little bit of depth and I'm going to hit it back with the exact same color but this time we're going to dry brush it on. So I've got my cinnamon brown, pour a bunch out on my palette here. You guys have seen me dry brush plenty of things in our past videos but just to go over it again for those of you who aren't familiar with dry brushing, one of the most basic techniques. Just putting a little bit on the brush, brushing it out on a paper towel until it's pretty thin. I like to use more than one paper towel because generally you get a lot on the first bunch and then you go around the other one and that really shows you how much you actually have on your brush. I don't want to go too heavy, but I do want to go heavy enough because we are going to be putting another dry brush layer on this after this coat. So. Don't want to glob it on, but at the same time, I want to go relatively heavy. The good news about dry brushing is that you can go on light and then get heavier with it. Go another layer. Don't go too heavy at first because you might kill it and then you've reversed everything you did and you'll have to wash it again and start again. So to avoid that, just brush it out a lot on the paper towel and then I'm actually going to go against the grain of the wood. So all the boards, the grain is going this way. I want my strokes to go the opposite way so that we maintain all the little details. Just like that. And they're killing music. Well, I'll write a song for you, I'll write a song for me I'll rant till my pen explodes Like it really fucking matters what I have to say Like it matters how the story goes If you don't have the look they're looking for today They're killing the muse And they're killing the muse the end of that dry brush stage. Uh, I'm just gonna take a final look around and make sure that any areas that look really too dark I'm just gonna touch up real quick with this. Here, I got a little too much black still. Here. Make sure you get in all the crevices, all the little corners guys. Get underneath everything. I mean you don't have to get underneath underneath. Like obviously I didn't paint the like bottom bottom because like really I mean number one in real life it'd be all shadows under there so there's not going to be any highlights and second of all um, it's just a pain in the butt to, to paint and nobody's ever going to see it so forget it uh, so I'm just going to go around make sure this is relatively uniform and the next dry brush stage we're going to continue keeping it somewhat uniform with the existing Malifaux terrain that I've built and uh, by dry brushing the dirt with this yellow oxide it's liquid tech liquid tex basics can't talk today yellow oxide so same thing I'm just gonna pour a little bit on my palette here that's probably way too much but whatever stuff's cheap and uh, just like before brush it out on my paper towels and again we don't want a super heavy dry brush but we also want it heavy enough that when we do our final dry brush you will still be able to see this through it so we're gonna do like a sort of heavy dry brush and then a lighter dry brush on top of that of the next color and you guys will see that in the next stage. So for right now, I've got my wide skinny brush so I can get up all in between and stuff and uh, just going broad strokes across the dirt here. Nothing complicated. So let's do it. <laughs>
basically it guys. I mean now I'm just gonna go around and really just get a good hit on the bases of the dowels. Um, as I've said before in the past, it makes sense for the dirt to be on the wood. It wouldn't make sense for the wood colors to be on the dirt. That's why we did the wood first. Especially in a desert where the dust is blown all around and stuff, there is going to be some dirt on the wood. So there we go. That's pretty much what I want right there. Quick and easy step. Just like that. And then we're going to go on to the final dry brush layer and pretty much complete this piece. Alright, final step on our terrain piece as far as painting. I'm going to finish it off with this Liquitex Basics Unbleached Titanium. This is basically a bleach bone or uh, I guess you shopty bone kind of color. And we're just going to do a very light dry brush, if I can get any out of this bottle that is. It's getting pretty low I guess. We're going to do a very light dry brush of this. Uh, just to finish it off. So let's get some out of here. There we go. And this just provides basically a final highlight to everything. It will unify the yellow and the brown that I've done on both. Just bring the whole piece together and just create a nice final shade. And we want to make sure that we do a really light dry brush this time. I can't even emphasize how light you want to do this. Like I said before, you can start light and add more. Don't start heavy because this is the final step. If we screw up, we're going to have to do the whole thing over again. So we're going to be real careful to go real light. And I'm going to do it on both the dirt and the wood. On the entire piece. Now don't worry as much about getting all up underneath and stuff like I said before. Uh, in this case it's really just to show the light hitting the piece. So really I would focus on the outside. Again, like I said, as well as the base, the dirt, everything, you want to kind of get everywhere. So if I can show you here, just on the front of this even, just a nice light final dry brush, just like that. You can see it just there. And it just brought everything back up. You can still see the original colors through. And it just provides a nice final shade. So, let's do the whole piece. Oh, well, baby, if that's not what you want. Well, I'm not that man. Cause I'm letting you know. All of the projects. Just interrupt for a second. You see right here, I just put it on way too heavy. So that's going to be a problem. But what I'm going to do is I'm hopefully just going to brush it out around the piece. Maybe go a little bit heavier on the nearby sections and hopefully it won't stand out that much. If I really need to, I can hit it with a little bit of either brown or black wash after, bring it back down and then just hit it with a quick dry brush again. I'm not too worried about it because it's only the one spot and it's kind of on the back. So we're just going to keep going. Alright, so there it is. That is it for the paint job. So, I really like this final stage because not only, like I said, does it unify the entire piece, but now, because of our black ink and because of the cinnamon brown dry brush, now you can really pick out the wood grain lines on dowels as well as on the popsicle sticks, plus it just adds a nice little dusting fog to the entire piece. 
So that is it as far as paint. So I'm gonna go wash out my brush and then we're gonna throw some grass on. All right, so all the other Malifaux pieces that we've done for our table have all had that sort of like yellowy dead grass on them. So that's what we're gonna do on this one. We wanna bring it together with all the other ones. Whoa, just shot some glue across the room there. So I'm just gonna take my PVA white glue, just like that, put it on my palette. Sorry, a little bit off camera for you guys there. Right there on my palette. And I'm just gonna go around and basically any areas of the bottom where uh, I feel like my dry brush isn't good enough, either I've got too much or too little or whatever, as well as pretty much just anywhere I feel like putting it. I'm gonna put a nice dollop of PVA glue. Oh, well, I'm crossing the tracks It's that I'm going next door And when I get back well, I'll tell you my story And when I get back well, I'll tell you my story we've got all our PVA glue on, I'm just going to take this piece of random printer paper that I've got. This is just to ensure that uh, we don't make a gigantic mess of the workbench with the grass and also that we don't waste any of it because the stuff ain't expensive but it ain't super cheap either. So here I've got the Gale Force 9, uh, I don't know what it's really called but it's like a yellowy grass, kind of clumpy. And this is what I've been using for our Malifaux pieces and I'm going to use it on this one. So it's just as simple. Taking a pinch and sprinkling it where the glue is. That's all it is. Just sprinkle it nice and evenly all around and put more than you actually want on there. Because we have this paper here, I'm going to shake it off after and all the extra we can just kind of pour back into the uh, container. So don't be afraid to get lots on there because it will not go to waste. Now in fast motion, I'm just going to tap off the excess, just to explain you in detail what I'm doing here. I'm tapping it off onto the paper, and then I have put this nice little fold in the paper, and that's just simply so I can do this, and it all goes towards the center and creates a little funnel, and then I can just easily pour it back into my container with very little spillage, and none of it goes to waste, and I've still got lots for the next Malifaux terrain piece. Cool, so the final touch on our gallows is going to be, of course, the noose. Now, I don't know how to actually tie a noose. There is like a crazy way to actually tie a noose. If you want to know how to tie a real noose, I mean, you can always Google it. Um, if you are all that interested in how to tie a real noose, you should probably seek psychi psychiatric help. But for now, we're just going to tie a little tiny one, something that even looks kind of like one. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, because it is a terrain feature, we're not actually hanging anybody by this thing. So I'm just gonna do what I think looks like a noose and uh, you guys can correct me on how to tie a real one. I would love to get that conversation started. But uh, basically I'm just gonna take this piece of string. Now I would suggest actually using brown twine or white rope. Uh, in this case, the small hardware store near me didn't have uh, much left, so I ended up getting this like yellow rope, which isn't great because it's not going to look like a real rope, but I'll show you how, how I'm going to fix that. Uh, so really you can use anything as long as it is a thin rope and not too thick that it looks out of scale. So in my opinion, this is how I'm going to do the noose, I'm just going to create a little loop that would just be slightly bigger than like a Malifaux dude's head and uh, just start wrapping it around this piece that I've got hanging down. I'm just gonna take this long piece and just wrap it around a bunch of times, just so it looks like an actual noose. There we go. Well, everything's a 
All right, now that's not the best looking noose in the world, but as you can see, it looks pretty damn close. So now, just to hold it in place, I'm going to take a little bit of my crazy glue, because this final strand, of course, is just going to unravel if I let go of it right now. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to hit it with a little tiny bit of crazy glue, just to hold it in place. There we go. Bam. Excellent. Perfect. There we go. Now I'm just going to trim off this little bit of extra. I'll give thanks to the failures that brought me here. To all the mistakes I've made and have yet to make. Cool. So there's our noose. So now, all I want to do is just kind of wrap it over like this around the top. Like so. And just put a little bit of glue on there just to hold it in place. Nothing fancy. Isn't it funny how everything works out? Great thing about crazy glue is it will literally glue anything to anything, including your fingers, guys. So be careful. <clears throat> But because it is string, I want to make sure I put a nice dollop on there because it's going to soak into the rope. And it might soak in too much that it won't really hold on. Yep, yeah, see? Didn't really hold on. So I'm just going to have to keep fiddling here until this works out the way I want it to. This could get meticulous, it could get tedious. So be patient. Things like crazy glue, you really gotta hold for a while sometimes. It doesn't always stick immediately. And blowing on it helps. Now, for those of you who don't know, super glue, the best hardener for super glue to speed up the hardening process is water. So blowing on it, you would think it was the air that actually dries the glue quicker, when in fact it's the moisture of your breath that causes it to harden quicker. So if you don't know, now you know. And there's our noose. So, as, as I said, I don't like the yellow color of this, which is why I suggested using brown twine as opposed to this yellow, gross stupidness here. Um, so I'm going to let that super glue just kind of harden for a little bit and then we're going to hit it with some paint and some wash and we'll call this terrain piece done. So. Alright, so now our ridiculous looking yellow noose is dry. We're going to make it lot, not look so ridiculous. So I've got here this, uh, this Crafters Acrylic Tan and I'm going to paint it with that first and then I'm going to give it a little wash just to give it some, uh, some depth. Just basic, you know, this is kind of like what I would anticipate a rope color to be. Uh, like I said, if you had used brown twine, it would have been much better probably. But as I said, uh, I was unable to get some today, so I just decided to use this since it was all I could find. And uh, it'll, it'll probably suffice. Plus, it's probably better that I'm painting it anyway, because then it'll actually blend in with uh, everything else on the terrain piece, as opposed to just being a piece of brown rope on a painted piece. Like, it's not painted but even if you are to use brown twine I would suggest still after tying it like this just adding a wash and you can just skip the, uh, the stage I'm doing right now the tan you can just use the brown twine and just throw like an Agrax earth shade over top but since I'm using yellow which doesn't look like real rope I'm going to paint it this tan let the tan dry and then hit it with some Agrax earth shade so Guys fully painted. is so easy. Cause it's little things that really please me. Time makes it so There we go. So just let that 
dry and then we'll hit it with a wash. Excellent, so now that our tan is dry, I'm just gonna take some Agrax Earthshade. Oh, let it focus there. Just basic Agrax Earthshade. And I'm going to paint this noose with the Agrax Earthshade. Now I'm gonna pan down a bit for you here, just to show you, because I've already painted this piece. So I'm, I'm gonna find that when I put on the wash, especially the way I'm gonna do it now, it's gonna wanna drip off, and I don't want drips all over the base of my thing now that I've painted it all nice. This is the final step, let's keep it that way. Uh, so I'm just gonna lay down a paper towel, just like that, just to prevent anything from dripping down and ruining my existing paint job. So, why don't I just zoom back in for you. You can see what I'm doing a little closer. And, we're just gonna soak this guy right out of the pot and then what I want to do is actually put it on top because I know it's going to run down so if I start from the top down it's more likely to give a more natural appearance perfect excellent I want to wash for too much pooling at the bottom a little bit is okay. I can deal with that. There you go. Let's do the other side. Oh, some of it carried through, which is exactly what I wanted. But now, especially areas like this where a little bit of my yellow is still showing through, I want to make sure that I fill that crevice with wash. Normally on a miniature you wouldn't want too much pooling, but in this case I use that weird plasticky rope, which is just a disaster. So if you guys are doing this at home, please, for the love of all that is holy, use that brown twine. Don't use the rope that I used. But the techniques are still sound. There you go. So I've got a little bit of pooling at the bottom. Dry with my brush so that there's no take a paper towel and just take all the ink that is in my brush out of it and then just dab. Make sure the pooling is not severe. And that's that. So I'm gonna wait for it to dry and then we have a completed terrain piece. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I think it turned out to be a pretty sweet little terrain piece. So uh, Thanks for checking this out. I mean, we've been building this Malifaux table a little bit at a time. Obviously, we started the channel by building our Malifaux town, and it's just been blowing up since. Uh, so this is yet another terrain piece to add to our awesome table. So hopefully you guys will be seeing this in future battle reports. If you want to see our future battle reports, as well as future terrain tutorials, and Malifaux specifically terrain tutorials as well, uh, please hit the subscribe button at the bottom there. Also, hit that little bell notification so that you know when these videos come out. Uh, on top of that, if you really like what we do here at Encounter Wargaming, you can, you can check out our Patreon campaign. It's in the description below. Uh, just follow that link and all the details are there. It gets you extra perks, extra video content, as well as there is extra bonuses just for being such awesome people and contributing to what we do here at Encounter Wargaming. So I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial, and we'll see you at our next encounter. <laughs>